Hopefully, this is the last one of these we'll do this year. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> um, with that in mind, I'd like to start by talking about uh, my top priority for 2016. Last week at the Library of Congress, I outlined my vision for a confident America, here at home and abroad. The current approach isn't getting us there. So we need to offer the country a real alternative in the form of a bold pro-growth agenda. This morning, I told our members at our conference, this agenda will be our focus in the new year. I've asked each of our members to bring their ideas to the table so we can get started early next year. Over the last six weeks, I believe that we have made a very, very good down payment on this project. We've enacted the first long-term transportation bill in more than a decade. We've enacted the biggest reform of our education system in 25 years, driving power back to the states, school districts, and our students. We've enacted a bipartisan defense bill that requires the president to put forward a real, comprehensive plan to defeat ISIS. Tomorrow, we will pass a customs enforcement bill. This is a bill that I had negotiated while being Ways and Means Chair. It's the most comprehensive rewrite of our customs laws in a generation. This will help American workers and businesses compete on a level playing field. We have done all of this while opening up the process and returning to regular order. I've talked about how conference committees have been an, an endangered species here in Washington. Well, with the customs conference report passing tomorrow, that will be the third conference report passing in Congress in 10 days. Let me put that in perspective. In the entire last Congress, only three conference reports become law in total. Only three conference reports became law all last Congress. We've done three conference reports in 10 days. So we are getting real concrete results. And we are getting the House of Representatives back to functioning as the people's house. As we move forward, we need to raise our gaze. We need to aim higher than just trying to meet deadlines. We need to treat this like the generational defining moment that it really is so that we can give the people of this country a real choice. That is what 2016 is going to be all about, and I am looking forward to it. With that, I'd be happy to answer your questions. Mr. Speaker, um, uh, earlier this morning, uh, Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi and other Democrats were uh, laying perhaps a new demand uh, in omnibus negotiations on the table to remove the current rider banning uh, gun violence research. Do you have any response to that? Is that I'm, something that Republicans would consider? I'm not going to negotiate uh, current negotiations through the media. You know that. Well, do you have do you have any thoughts on the uh, argument that I'm it should gonna, be removed? I don't want to address. We're in the middle of negotiating an enormous. Um, year-long omnibus appropriations. Those negotiations are ongoing right now while we speak. Uh, the last thing I want to do is um, negotiate through the media. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you, you addressed Donald Trump's remarks the other day over at the, over at the RNC. Had a couple of days to digest it now. Um, you're a leader, a leader of the Republican Party. You've run for national office yourself. What's going on? right now. <laughs> do, do, do you think 35, the latest polls for what they're worth say that 35 percent of Republican primary likely voters support Donald Trump? What's, what's going on when you think I'm about it? I'm not going to comment on that. I'm focusing on making this place work. I'm not going to weigh in. Look, I weighed in on, on a comment made in the presidential campaign because I think that needed to be commented on. But I'm not going to spend every day here talking about the go-betweens of what's happening in the presidential election. That could put a ballast on the races of Republicans running for re-election? Look, look, you know what's going to get uh, this place working well? You know what's going to save the country? We put out an agenda to the American people in 2016. We show the people of this country, here is a better way forward. Here's a specific pro-growth, bold agenda. And you choose, Mr. and Mrs. America, you choose what kind of country you, ha you want to have. That is our obligation. We don't like the direction that America is headed. We think the country is headed in the wrong direction. Most people agree with us. And so we have an obligation. We have a duty to lay that positive vision out for the country, and that's what we're going to do in 2016. Thank you. Take us down the rabbit hole here a little bit. What happened when the plan was, I was told a week ago, we were going to try to have the bill out over last weekend. That didn't happen. Then we were going to have the House in session this weekend. That was peeled back within 24 hours. Now, you know, we're looking at maybe the middle of next week. Walk us through what happened and why there's the delay. We want to get it right. We don't want to rush legislation, especially the big legislation like this omnibus appropriations. Um, this is something I more or less inherited from the last regime, and I don't want to rush things through here. I want to get it right. 
we've always had the third week of December on our calendar as, as a week that we would potentially be in session. So we didn't want to come up against an arbitrary December 11th deadline and rush something. Uh, we're, we're negotiating. What we realized is we didn't have to keep our members here on Saturday and Sunday uh, be, while we continue to negotiate. What was that real? Was it, what was that tripwire? That, that it really wasn't was a tripwire, only that I wasn't going to let December 11 be an arbitrary deadline that made us rush legislation. We want to get it right. Please. Ryan, um, it seems that every one of these big spending bills gets about 80 members of your conference, and there's a sizable amount referred to as the hope yes, vote no folks. Representative Tom Cole said that those folks actually hurt your negotiating position because Nancy Pelosi can sit across the table and say, hey, you can only provide 80 votes. Do you feel that way? You know, I just don't want to comment on, on negotiating strategies or um, what it is that we're doing or how, how our votes are going. I think our members understand the situation quite well. Um, look, we're not going to get everything we want in negotiations. The Democrats aren't going to get everything they want in negotiations. But I believe that we will successfully complete these negotiations. You want more than 80, though. I mean, Mr. Scalise did send out that memo uh, look, saying get on board. I, I don't want to comment on the internal deliberations of what's going on in our conference. Uh, we're negotiating. Uh, not everybody gets what they want when you negotiate in divided government, um, but I think we will complete this. Yeah. There seems to be um, an air of sort of nonchalance that Congress is missing this December 11th deadline. I know you guys want to. Yeah, it's been it like that a lot around here. <laughs> um, it's not nonchalance. It's getting it right. Look, this is a trillion dollars we're dealing with. This this is hardworking taxpayers work hard to send us their tax dollars. We have to respect that, and so that's why we have to make sure that. How we spend the hardworking taxpayer dollars are done in a way where we are scrutinizing every dollar, and we're not going to rush it. We're going to get it right. And so the deadlines, look, deadlines come and deadlines go. We want to make sure that we get it right, and that is why we're trying to get these deliberations and these negotiations going the right way without having some artificial deadline to get us. Uh, Alan. Hey, as far as 2016, as you started, uh, your comments. Uh, the tax overhaul, would that be number one? And do you intend to move bills or just put another bill on the table like Dave Camp? This is something we're going to be uh, deliberating in our retreat and there on after. So I'm not going to be the Speaker of the House dictating exactly how we assemble our agenda and what's in the agenda. What I am doing is creating a, 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 a format, a structure for our members to come together and participate in how to build a pro-growth agenda and lay it out for the country. So that is a decision we're going to make jointly as a conference. It's one of the things I'm trying to do in this position is not hold power so closely, but to decentralize it so that all of the members of our conference, so that all members of Congress have an ability to truly participate in this situation, in, this, in, this, in assembling this agenda. And so that's why I'm not going to answer questions I don't have answers to, because I'm not going to be the only one making these decisions. I want my colleagues joining me in making these decisions. Do you anticipate to finish by Wednesday, or should we, would, could you think it'll go through the week? I'm not going to put a deadline on it. Uh, I don't think it, it would be right to say what date we're going to be done by, because I want to make sure that these negotiations are done well and done right, and not by some arbitrary deadline. Could you, give some, could you just give some sense about where things are, generally speaking? We're, we're, we're trading offers. We're talking to each other. Uh, we're doing all of the things that you would do, the appropriators and the leaders, uh, so that we can get an agreement. You have billions of dollars of tax extenders hanging around. Uh, can you give us some sort of insight as to how that's going to happen? Tax and extenders and the omnibus are both simultaneous negotiations that are taking place at the same time. Uh, we posted a bill. That bill is our base case bill. Uh, we will pass that bill uh, if we cannot get an agreement on a bigger package. Mr. Speaker, the San Bernardino briefing today, what questions do you go in with and what do you hope to hear? I received uh, a briefing at the beginning of the week, uh, so I asked uh, most of my questions among, uh, uh, on the FBI and other um, intelligence officials. What I wanted to do is give all members of Congress access to the same briefers that I received at the beginning of the week so that they can get answers to their questions. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. On your 2016 agenda, by the way, Francine Kiefer from the Christian Science. You know, thank you, by the way. Yes, I know most of you, but you know, if you could keep doing um, that, that'd be helpful. How is that going to fit with the presidential um, candidates? There, there are two independent avenues, but obviously this program that you want to come up with is pretty substantial. We've given a lot of thought to that. Uh, I've been on a ticket. I'm familiar with how this works. I don't think that we have the time to wait until a nominee arrives, which could be as late as... I don't know, June or July, uh, to then come up with an agenda to show the country who we are and what we believe in. We don't like the, tra the path America is on. We think we're on the wrong track. We have an obligation to show a better way forward. 
And, and we have something to say about that. So I think that we're going to do this earlier because I just think it's wrong to, to, to wait that long. I don't think we had the luxury of waiting. And what I learned um, in presidential campaigns is you have to start uh, talking about these issues early and often so that people understand what kind of choice they're truly being given. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's Lisa Mestra from the LA Times. Um, I just wanted to back up. Um, something you said earlier in the week was um, that you would go ahead and support the Republican nominee, whoever that is. Can you just talk about the importance of that? Why sure. do you believe it's important to support the nominee? Even you may not know this, Donald but Trump? as Speaker of the House, I'm the chairman of the Republican National Convention. So I chair the convention. So I'm going to be neutral, A, in the presidential election, uh, in the nominating process, because I'm the chair of the convention. So I'm not going to say who I'm for or who I'm against. I'm going to support the nominee. Wouldn't it be a little weird if the chair of the convention isn't supporting the, event, the actual nominee? So because I, am, I have a special role as chair of the Republican convention, I stay neutral and I support the nominee. And all the while, I will stand up for what I believe. I will stand up for what I believe is right. And I will stand up for our party's principles and our nation's principles. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.